Thank you for joining us this evening. And we've got more people jumping on. All right, fantastic. Okay, so um, I think it's a good time then for me to get going. Um, welcome again to everyone joining us this evening. My name is Crispian Lees. I'm the head of ed education at Advantage Learn. And uh, joining me this evening is Michaela Priest, who you, you, who's in the background and supporting, um, one of our team members of Advantage Learn as well. So from both of us, welcome to you all um, joining us for this NBT informational webinar. Um, before I get going, I do like to just check in that the stream is functioning correctly and that you can all hear me and see me. So if you can hear me and see me well, please, can you find the function, the, the raise your hand function and do that now so that I can be sure that I'm coming across okay. Thank you, Corin. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay, so um, to kick off then, thanks, Sarav. To kick off then, it would, it would be nice to um, understand where you're joining us from, what part of the country. So if you don't mind just posting in the chat um, what, what part of the country you're coming from and, and what school you or your, your son or daughter is, is, is at, it's always nice to see um, who we have on the webinar for the evening. So if you can find that, that's great. KZN St. Henry's Morris College, fantastic. And a couple of others coming on there. Great. All right. So let me kick off then. So at Advantage Learn, um, just to give you some context in terms of who we are, um, we're an educational organization that helps learners with self-study resources, national benchmark test preparation, our advanced programs in, um, they are the IEB certificates, AP Maths and AP Physics. And then we help learners in exam preparation and via our subject academies in maths and science to help learners take their, those core subject results to the next level. This evening, I'm going to be talking to you about the national benchmark tests and just providing you with some information around them. It is a significant thing that learners need to navigate in their matric years. Um, and so, yeah, well done for joining the webinar and, um, getting started on that, on that journey of understanding what the national benchmark tests are all about. In terms of what I'm going to be covering this evening, um, there's really three items that we're going to be going through together. And that is, what are the national benchmark tests? Who needs to write the NBTs and why they are important? And then, how can I prepare for the national benchmark tests? So those are the three aspects that we will be going through. Um, and as I've mentioned, it's not a simple landscape to navigate in terms of the, the national benchmark tests, what, what university and degree program requirements are and who needs to write them. So it's a good thing that you're starting to think about it and that you're starting to engage with, with this aspect. So let's kick off then with what are the national benchmark tests? So the national benchmark tests um, were commissioned by Higher Education South Africa in 2008. And they were commissioned as a set of tests used to assess academic readiness for tertiary study. So universities were having a challenge in understanding the readiness of learners entering at universities and gearing their degree programs and their tertiary programs in a way that um, enabled success at a, at, a tertiary, at a tertiary level. So essentially matriculants graduating out of the um, high school system in South Africa, the profile of matriculants in terms of where their knowledge was at in various levels was changing and universities were recognizing the need to adjust their programs to be more supportive of the new new type of learner enter, entering you know, universities. And so higher education South Africa commissioned these tests 
to give universities more information uh, and benchmark learners so that they could be empowered to adjust their programs to support success at a university level. Um, the, and so the National Benchmark Test Project was formed and it operates out of a research unit at the University of Cape Town called CTAP, the Center for Educational Testing and Placement, and they administer the National Benchmark Test. Now, as the National Benchmark Tests were used and became increasingly used by universities, um, many universities started to recognize that these results were also incredibly helpful in terms of guiding admissions decisions for applicants to their uh, their universities in their various degree programs. So they they can and they have been used quite extensively as placement assessments in a similar way to the way the SATs are used in America for university placements in, in, in America. So while the tests are there to inform universities as to how they can adjust their programs to be supportive towards um, matriculants entering into the into the tertiary into the tertiary learning space universities also do use them as entrance requirements in certain of their degree programs to provide them with more information to make the most effective placement decisions at their universities the national benchmark tests are made up of two assessments, the AQL test and the MAT test. Um, and I'm now going to go into each of those assessments to give you insight into what they are. The AQL test is the academic and quantitative literacy test. Um, if a learner needs to write the national benchmark test, this is the compulsory test. So it assesses academic literacy and quantitative li literacy, which are two very distinct components of the test. Academic literacy is all about learners demonstrating their ability to read, understand, and communicate meaning from, from bodies of text, texts and various types of texts. So academic literacy is all about being able to meaningfully engage with information um, to, to derive meaning and be able to interpret what is fact, what is opinion, um, and yeah, it's all, it's all about being able to engage meaningfully with information. That's what academic literacy is. The other component to the academic and quantitative literacy test is quantitative literacy. And that is somewhat similar to mathematical literacy, which is studied, at, which is a subject at, at, at a high school level. Um, and quantitative literacy is all about numerical literacy. So being able to um, engage with numerical problem, functional numerical problems, such as graphical interpretation, um, financial type problems, simple financial problems, and, and real life um, applications of mathematics, essentially. So the academic and quantitative literacy test assesses two very distinct domains. Um, a component that is similar to, to your home language, English, um, or Afrikaans, because the tests are admin, the, the languages of testing are either English or Afrikaans. And then a quantitative literacy aspect, which is more mathematical in, nat in nature. And significantly, in the quantitative literacy section, no calculators are allowed. So it does require good arithmetic skills and mental maths and um, skills in terms of est estimation skills as well, which is very important. The question style in terms of the academic and quantitative literacy test is that it is a standardized assessment. As I've mentioned, it's administered by the National Benchmark Test Project. They are the administrating body. The administrating information um, from the administrating body can be found at nbt.ac.za. They are the administrating organization. Um, and so they, they, they administer these standardized assessments. And they are multiple choice assessments. So in this test, learners can expect questions on grammar, punctuation,
vocabulary, figures of speech. Um, and then obviously from the quantitative literacy component, numerical application type questions, which are largely housed in um, graphical interpretation or story sum type problems. Um, and that is just to give you a degree of insight into the AQL test, which stands for academic and quantitative li literacy. As I mentioned previously, but just to re-emphasize, if a learner needs to write the NDTs, they will have to write the AQL test. That is the compulsory um, test of the two national benchmark tests. The other test is the MAT test, and that is simply an abbreviation for mathematics. That is more a pure mathematics test. And this test is only um, required by certain degree programs at certain universities. And it's, as a generalization, it is largely required by your highly competitive degree programs, where there are a lot of learners uh, trying to access those degree programs, and there's only a limited number of seats at the, at the various universities for those types of degrees. Um, but it's also largely required by degree programs that are more analytical in nature and have a, have a large degree of mathematics within their, their degree program. So the math test is closely related to core mathematics, which is studied at a high school level, but it does ask questions in, in a bit of a different nature and it, it, it does test the student's ability to apply their, their, their core mathematics knowledge in a slightly different way. It is also a standardized assessment, which is um, assessed by a multiple choice. And, and it's all about demonstrating your understanding of mathematical concepts. Equally, no calculator is allowed here, which is a significant stumbling block for high school learners, where far too many high school learners are far too dependent on their calculators for simple arithmetic. Um, so this is, a, this is a massive stumbling block for learners going to write the national benchmark tests and um, the fact that no calculator is allowed. So th that is something really to take note of um, and to be aware of and actually to start preparing yourself for, um, for when you do write the national benchmark test. So those are the two tests. The AQL test, academic and quantitative literacy, and the math test, the mathematics test. If you need to write the MBTs, the AQL test is compulsory. The MAT test is only required by certain degree programs at certain universities. And so you need to do your research in terms of what your requirements are for the university and degree program that you are applying, that, that you are applying towards. So that brings me nicely on to the next, um, the next aspect that we'd like to deal with this evening, and that is who needs to write the NBTs. So most grade 12s applying for tertiary study in South Africa, as well as learners looking to enter competitive de degree programs and or scholarship programs will need to write the national benchmark tests. But the thing that I need to emphasize here for all of you is that it is not a simple um, it is, this is not a simple black and white problem. Um, whether or not you need to write the NBTs is university and degree program specific. So whether or not you need to write the national benchmark dep tests depends on what universities you are applying to, as well as what degree programs you are applying to. And so the key takeaway I want you to um, note in your mind this evening is that you need to do your research for your context. You need to look at the universities that you are applying towards and the degree programs that you are applying towards at each of the universities that you're applying towards for both your first, second, and your third choices. Understand what their admissions or requirements are relative to the national benchmark tests. And then if any of those applications require the national benchmark tests, then you need to write the national benchmark tests. The other aspect to consider is if you are applying towards scholarships, a lot of scholarship programs require the national benchmark tests. The Nash, what, is, what is broadly recognized now is the national benchmark tests essentially give 
um, institutions, mainly tertiary institutions, but also um, scholarship programs, an additional um, an additional layer of information in order to make um, very informed admissions or um, successful application decisions. Um, and so that's where the NBTs have become extremely helpful to tertiary institutions and scholarship programs. The National Senior Certificate, unfortunately, the matric certificate is not differentiating candidates significantly. And so tertiary institutions and scholarship programs are needing an additional sorting mechanism or an additional application criteria in order to make the best admission decisions that they can. And the national benchmark tests are providing them with that information to enable it. As mentioned, if you need to write the, excuse me, <coughs> if you need to write the MBTs, the AQL test is compulsory. Um, the MAT test is only required for specific degree programs like sciences, engineering, medicine, your um, commerce degrees, so BCom, actuarial science, and generally speaking, the degree programs for which there is um, a lot of competition in terms of getting into it. Generally, those degree programs will also require the MAT test to enable the to give the tertiary institutions another piece of information with which to make the best placement decisions for the limited seats on the program. Okay, so that then brings us on to um, our next um, item, which is why you need to pre prepare for the MBTs. Now, and, and there are different schools of thought out there in terms of preparation for the national benchmark tests. But at Advantage Learn, we strongly believe that it is important for you to prepare for the national benchmark tests. Um, and that is for a number of reasons. The first being that the MBTs are a very unique type of assessment that, is, that are different to what learners are used to. Learners are not that conversant with multiple choice type assessments um, and, and the dynamics of that type of testing. And so it can be, it can lead to, to some pop performance in the test. The, the other thing that I need to um, emphasize here in terms of the multiple choice format is that um, there is no room for part marks in the national benchmark tests. And many learners score a lot of their marks in working marks in their assessments at school. And so I do like to explain this via a bit of an example. And I would encourage you to do this because learners do see that for instance, if they look at their maths mark at school, um, they might be achieving 80 to 90% in, 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 in core maths at school. But then when they go and write the MAT test as part of the MBTs, their mark drops drastically um, to in the order of, of 60 to 70%, um, generally by about 20%. Um, and that's for two, two reasons, um, two major reasons. One, that a lot of the very challenging problems in the national benchmark tests are exactly that, very challenging. Um, but also, the, 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 the problems and the questions are not scaffolded like they are at a school level. At a school level, oftentimes, questions are scaffolded. So if you have a question, say, for instance, question four of your exam, it might consist of, of, of of five parts to that question or six parts to that question for A, B, C, D, E, and F. And question A is generally a simpler question for you, but the information that you calculate in question A helps you in calculating, in, in solving part B, which then helps you in part C, and so on and so forth. And so the, the problem is scaffolded and essentially the way in which the question is asked helps you along the solution path towards the final problem, question F, which is the really challenging problem, but the way the question is constructed has helped you towards that point and helped you to show you which way to go in terms of then solving for question F. In the more advanced problems in the national benchmark tests, they are unscaffolded. You simply ask question 4F and you need to insightfully um, 
figure out the solution path and work your way through to that final point. So the more advanced questions are very challenging in that regard and that they are largely unscaffolded. And the other element to why learners um, don't do so well in the multiple choice format is that accuracy is key and there are no part marks. So the exercise I was alluding to er earlier, which learners should do is they should take their last mathematics test they should look at that test and see how many of the questions in that test they got 100% on. So five out of five. Those are the only questions that learners would get correct in the national benchmark test because five, out of those five marks, there's probably two accuracy marks for the final answer. And then there's probably three method marks um, that they can score in terms of showing they're working on how they solve the problem. And so if a learner scored three out of five for that problem, well, they didn't get the accurate answer out at the end of the day. So they wouldn't, in the, in the national benchmark test, they would get zero um, for, the, for that problem. And it's an interesting exercise to do, to look at your last test, look at which questions you got 100% on. You can take credit for those, for, for those questions and, and be sure that you would have got the marks for those. But in the questions where you only got, you only scored path marks or method marks, you disregard those marks and then recalculate your result that you would achieve. And it paints a different picture in terms of what mark you can expect in the national benchmark test. And so accuracy, accuracy is key and being comfortable with multiple choice type um, questions is key. And there is a strategy around um, answering multiple choice type questions with process of elimination and other, other techniques, which learners can also develop through, through, through practice. So that present, presents a significant challenge to learners in the national benchmark test. And then thirdly, the fact that they cannot use a calculator, which I've already mentioned and I'm re-emphasizing here. Far too many learners um, lean far too heavily on their calculators for simple arithmetic. And also because they lean too heavily on their calculators, their estimation skills are not, uh, are not um, very good and the, and simple arithmetic and and a degree of estimation is incredibly helpful in these assessments and so um not having a calculator is an is a is a is a massive stumbling block for for learners that they need to start to come to terms with and so the advice that we give is to the two learners is from now put your calculator away in maths um, at school develop your arithmetic skills and your mind maths and your estimation skills by putting your calculator away. Only pick up your calculator for problems where you have to, where, where you, can't, you can't solve it without a calculator. So for instance, trigonometry, sine of 55 degrees, you can't solve that mentally via arithmetic. You need a calculator for that. And then obviously you can, you can use the calculator in that regard. So, um, but the last point in terms of why we believe preparing for your national benchmark tests is so important is that these results can affect your future in that they can influence your um, admission into the degree and university of your choice. And that's the step, that's the, that's the next step towards the career that you're aspiring to. So um, by virtue of that fact, and um, we strongly recommend preparing for the national benchmark test so you can score your best result and give yourself your, yourself the best chance at admission into the, the degree that you are looking to, towards studying, um, which, as I mentioned, is the next stepping stone towards the career that you, that you, that you see yourself in beyond, beyond, um, beyond university and beyond high school. So, yeah, we, we strongly um, recommend preparing for the national benchmark tests and we were the first educational organization to, in South Africa to assist learners with national benchmark test preparation. Okay, so in a similar ve vein, why are the NBTs important? Well, there is growing competition to get into tertiary institutions and as I've mentioned before, um, universities are using them as, as a placement mechanism at, at, to varying degrees at various universities and in, in various degree programs. So um, if it is an admission requirement, then you need to write the national benchmark tests. 
More and more institutions require it to be written before the application date for that course closes. So in the past, pre-2020, uh, pre um, a lot of the medical faculties or the medicine faculties were requiring that learners write the national benchmark tests before the end of June. Um, and so you also need to um, do your research in terms of the timing um, of when, by when you need to write the tests. And, and, and I must just emphasize at that point that often the, the, the um, requirement there is a deadline by which learners need to write the test, not necessarily by when the results need to be available. So just be aware of that difference. The, the, in the past for, 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 for medical faculties, for learners applying towards medicine, and um, the requirement was that they need to write before the 30th of June, but um, that didn't mean that their results needed to be available. Generally, the results only be become available within the month after, after learners have written the test. So there's the, the, that's an important thing to be uh, aware of. And the, the last statement is to re-emphasize that it has varying degrees of importance per university, per department. So you need to do your research. You need to you need to figure out what it is that you're wanting to apply to apply towards, and your various options: your first choice, your second choice, and your third choice. Figure out what universities you're wanting to apply apply towards, and then look at those university and degree uh, and degree program requirements. And if any of them require you to write the national benchmark tests, then you're going to need to write the national benchmark tests. All right, so how can one prepare for the MBTs? And that's the last aspect that I'd like to cover th this evening. Um, and this is, a, I'm really drilling this home this evening, but do your research. That is the first thing. Um, requirements are different for everyone. So make sure you engage um, with your context and the university and degree program that you are applying towards and understand what their requirements are. A lot of the universities are in right now starting to publish their requirements towards 2022 admissions. So um, the requirements for 2021 matriculants and any learners looking to apply to tertiary to start studying in 2022. A lot of the requirements are currently being published. Um, the University of the Free State, for instance, have, have um, published that the MBT is a, is a requirement for, for all first year um, university learners. Um, Stellenbosch, for instance, have mentioned that the AQL test is, is a requirement for, for, for their law degrees. Um, so information is coming out from universities. And, and, and so the first point of call is to do your research. Get to know more about the MBTs. I think by you attending this evening's webinar, you're already on the right track in that regard. Um, another nice way to get started in terms of understanding the NBTs is to try our free quiz and um, to test your understanding with NBT style questions. I'll, sh I'll show the URL to you um, later on in the presentation and you can go and you can actually try our free quiz in that regard. And it'll give you a sense for the type of questions that you, that um, you, you can be asked in the, in the, in the test. And it also can give you a sense for the degree of preparation that you can um, expect from advantage learning in terms of helping you to to prepare for the national benchmark test. The other thing that learners can do to help them prepare for the MBTs is work hard and apply yourself to your school mathematics and your and your home language. Um, so English or or um, yeah, your your you, the language that you're studying at, at school because that is you, that is very helpful in terms of the academic literacy component. So if you're applying yourself at mathematics in your in your mathematics subject at school, whether it's core maths or maths literacy, that's really helpful. If you're being mindful about using your calculator and growing your arithmetic skills, that's very helpful. Um, if you're applying yourself in, in English or, 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 or Afrikaans, remembering that those are the languages of testing in the national benchmark tests, then that's going to be helping your academic literacy. And the other thing that can help your academic literacy um, immensely is just reading broadly and reading lots of different types of text. The more you engage with, with, with text and comprehension of text, um, the, the better equipped you will be in the academic literacy component. I also want to mention at this point that um, maths literacy learners are better equipped for the quantitative literacy aspect of the, 
of the AQL test. While core maths learners are obviously well, better equipped towards the MAT test, but there's a, there's a little gap there. And that is that if a learner is doing core maths, they're not necessarily doing maths literacy. And a lot of core maths learners do find the quantitative literacy and component of the AQL test quite challenging because it is very different from the maths that they are used to, which is pure core maths that they're studying at school. So for learners who, who, who fit that profile and are doing core maths and not maths literacy, um, preparing for that quantitative literacy aspect is, is really important because it is quite different to the type of maths that you are used to. Um, then the other, uh, the other way that you can prepare for the MBTs is by doing a, a preparation course. We, um, as mentioned, we're the first educational organization in South Africa to help learners prepare for the national benchmark test. And we run in-person, live online, and um, self-study uh, self courses for, for learners countrywide. Um, and we help learners prepare for both the MAT and the AQL test. So to just give you a little bit more information on that, um, we have full AQL and MAT test preparation in the form of live online or in-person workshops um, and those and then we also have um, fully developed online courses in both English and Afrikaans so learners can prepare in person in English or Afrikaans for both of the tests or live online for both of both of the tests in both languages or via fully fledged online courses where learners can actually study at their own pace Included in these in these preparation courses are our mock tests, our advantage learn mock tests, as well as online student support delivered through our chat feature. So we have a team of expert NBT preparation educators that can help learners um, with any questions that you might have with the with the content, um, and and we also have a, a support team that can can guide you in terms of um, advising you when you should write the test. Um, for your context and, and also whether or not you need to write the test. So reach out to us for help in that regard. We'll be happy to assist you there. Um, in terms of your learning style, we really have preparation workshops that, um, that are geared towards whichever learning style suits you. Um, so our workshops, as I've mentioned, in person, we, we deliver them in person in all major metros in South Africa, but we also have the option for live, a, a live stream workshop where you're able to, to, to join live from the comfort of your own home. Um, and this gives you face time with, with one of our expert educators for your MAT or your AQL, AQL preparation. These workshops include our mock MBT tests and they come along with the, the workbook for the workshop that we work through. Um, and it gives you face time with our expert ed educators. They run at a set date and time, and you can find our full course, our, our full workshop catalog on advantagelearn.com. And um, we run them in both English and Afrikaans. We then have our online courses, um, where, which enable you to define your, a more individualized study uh, schedule for MAT and AQL. So these online courses are, are more su suited to a, a learner or a context that wants to be able to learn anytime or anywhere or fit their preparation around a very busy schedule. Um, and so those online courses give you 12 month access to, to, to the preparation courses. Um, you have access to online educator support. They are equally available in both English and Afrikaans. You get access to our mock MBT tests. And the significant difference is that um, these you can access at any time whereas our workshops are at a set date and time that you book into. Um, and yeah, different learners prefer different learning styles. Um, and, some le and often many learners opt to go to a workshop as well as enroll in the online course um, for an extremely comprehensive NBT preparation um, exercise. So those are the, the options that are available via advantagelearn.com. Um, this is the pricing. For, for those options. This is all, all available on our website. And um, significantly there is a is a is an online workshop special running where um you can you can take advantage of, of some some price dis discounts for our live online workshops. Um, but these are the options available to you. 
and there are combination options for learners that want to do the online course as well as the the, the um, intensive workshop the intensive workshops with us um, and as mentioned this is all available at advantagelearn.com so um, I don't think I should spend too much time on it um, if you are interested in, in, in national benchmark test preparation it's quite simple in terms of booking a course with Advantage Learn. Simply visit advantagelearn.com and filter and select your preparation of choice, whether that's a that's a, an in-person or a live online workshop or an online course. And our, via our website, you can go through um, the booking and check out um, in a very in a very seamless process. So if you want to um, book a preparation course, simply join advantagelearn.com and, and, and it's, 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 it's a very easy process to follow. Um, if, if all of this information and complexity is you finding it a little bit overwhelming in terms of whether or not you need to write the national benchmark test, when you should write the national benchmark test, um, and perhaps you want um, greater levels of access towards our, our our workshops and our online courses, you could consider our premium pass, which is our complete MBT preparation offering for one simple straightforward pass, uh, one simple straightforward price. Essentially, if you if you go with the premium pass, you'll get unlimited MAT and AQL live stream access. So you'll be able to attend as many live stream uh, workshops with us as, as you need to, to ensure that you feel prepared. Um, You'll get a dedicated MBT guide who can advise you in terms of when you should consider doing your your workshop and your online course, and, and when you should cons when it would be um, advisable for you to actually write your test based on your context. Um, and so, for those of you who feel like um, navigating the complexity is is too much this is something to consider for you and we can help you with with those with those um, decisions that you need to make um, just in terms of uh, of writing the tests the Na national benchmark tests um, project out of ctap have released the dates and so if you go to nbt.ac.za they are the administrating organization we are an educational organization that helps you to prepare for the national benchmark tests um, if you go to mbt.ac.za, you can see that they have already published their test dates and, and they have provisioned for writing the tests in person and online in 2021. And you'll see a number of opportunities through the year to do that. Um, so the test dates have already been published and you can start um, engaging with those test dates and planning when you think you should write. Um, as I mentioned previously, a good way to, to start um, engaging with with MBT type um, questions is to try our free quiz, um, which you can find via this URL, www.advantagelearn.com forward slash product forward slash MBT preparation, test yourself. Um, and Michaela will drop it in the chat now so that you can actually click straight through to it or copy it into your URL and, and navigate towards it and, and actually give it a try. And it gives you a nice idea of, of the types of questions that you can expect and, and the difficulty thereof. Um, so, um, yeah, that's just a helpful free tool via our website. Um, and that's really everything that I, I wanted to take you through this, this evening. So, yeah, and that brings us on to our question and answer. So, um, I hope you found that information helpful. Are, are there any, any burning questions that you might have uh, for me? Um, Michaela and I are here to address those questions. So we are now in the Q&A. Um, please, if you have any questions, um, you can either raise your hand and you can ask it verbally or post your question in the chat or the Q&A and I will, I will address those questions. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, I think just to add on to some of the things that Chris said, as I give you guys an opportunity to type some questions in the chat section, um, I thought I'd actually mention um, my experience with the MBTs and some things that surprised me. Um, so I was very surprised to find that the sections were timed. 
Um, and I think preparing for yourself, uh, preparing yourself, sorry, for the, for the MBTs can really assist in terms of timing because they set a time for a certain section and once that time is over, you can't go back and relook at it. So if you're slower in a section, unlucky, we're moving on to the next section. And I think that's just a helpful thing to remember as well. Um, and in terms of the scaffolding of the questions, so not having scaffolded questions, as Chris mentioned earlier, that takes you a lot longer than you think to get to the final answer. So again, with the timing issue, we're going to give it a couple more, maybe a minute or two more, Chris, what do you think? Just to see if anyone yeah. has that question. Yeah, that's good. Those are some great points, Michaela, around the timing and, and being able to work to time, but also the, 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 the gating of, of certain sections with, with time constraints. Yeah, I think um, perhaps I'll, I'll, we don't have any questions coming through the chat or um, via Facebook at this point. So I'm hoping that means that we've addressed most of your questions and that it's a good sign <laughs> and not that we put you to sleep. <laughs> um, but I think just to 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 finish off then it's it's helpful for us to address these frequently asked questions um before we close um and so some of the frequently asked questions are do i have to send my results to the universities i'm applying to okay and that's a good question and the answer is no the universities acquire the the results from um CTAP or, or the National Benchmark Tests Project directly. So you just need to make sure that you have written the test um, and by the time that the uh, your your application requires and for the tests that are required, whether it's only the AQL or both the AQL and the MAT, and then the, um, the university will acquire your results from the um, National Benchmark Test Project. Um, so you don't actually have to go and send it along. I see Diana's coming on. Um, and I don't know if she wants to ask something via the chat. Karen, you are welcome. Okay. Diana is asking, um, when should a student write the actual test? Um, so that's a good, that's a very good question. And it is really um, context specific. So um, what I mean by that is it depends. Um, and Diane has gone on to say like, do they need to ask like possibly after term one, grade 12, when is the opportune time? The opportune time to write the test is when um, you have you or, or your son or your daughter, the person actually having to write the test has the headspace to prepare well for the test and to be in a good position to, to, to write the test well. So, you know, a, a lot of learners have different contexts at, at high school. There's some learners who are, are really heavily involved in extracurricular um, activities, sports tours and, and, and whatnot. And so finding a window when um, that person is not so loaded from from another from from other engagements is is important. And that would probably be a good time to write to write the test, um, because that'll give them the headspace to to prepare for the test and the headspace to uh, uh, the heads, the headspace is in the presence of mind to then perform well in the test because they're not stressed out by other things. So uh, taking into account your extracurricular and school program is, is important. Um, and, but then the other significant thing, Diana, to your question is you need to understand whether there's any um, timing requirements placed on um, the application towards whatever university or degree program that learner is, is applying towards. So as I mentioned earlier on, in previous years um, for medical applications, learners have been required to write before at the end of June. Um, and that's been, a, that's been an application requirement at the various medical faculties. So you also need to take, take stock of that. Um, yeah, so um, 
those are the two aspects that you need to to bear in mind um, but essentially the, the the important things you need to to take into account are the learners context when will they have a, a, a a gap in their schedule that will enable them to prepare and and give them the good presence of mind to perform well on the test and then what are the applications requirements re required at the university okay so I, I hope that that helps you diana good question thank you okay i see that there is a question that has come through on facebook so thank you marie for your question how does it work if you want to apply to more than one university? Which one do you select when you register? Okay, so um, remember the, the universities will um, acquire your test results from um, CTAP, from the National Benchmark Test Project. And they administrate bookings and the tests via the website nbt.ac.za. So you only write the national benchmark tests once and then those results are available to the various universities that you are applying, applying towards. So, um, so in terms of registration, you simply register to write the national benchmark tests and then based off of what universities you've applied towards, those universities will then get your test results from in, uh, the National Benchmark Test Project to facilitate the, the admissions decision. So it's not like you need to send your results to the universities. The NBT project does that for you. And, and so what you need to understand is um, well, you're going to make applications to various universities. Like, for instance, you might um, let's say, for instance, you might apply at Stellenbosch and UCT for business science. Um, you therefore need to go through the university's application process and, and understand at, at UCT for business science, and you need to go through the university applications for process for business science at Stellenbosch, and you need to understand what their application requirements are relative to the national benchmark test. And then based off of that, plan to write the next national benchmark test. But after having completed the application process with at the university, when the university is making an admission decision, if they require the national benchmark test results, they will then go and get that result from the national benchmark test project. So you need to have made sure that you have written the, te the test with the, with the national benchmark test project so that that, that result will then be available to the university so that they can make placement decision. So um, I hope I hope I've I hope I've um, answered your question effectively, Michaela. Please um, color it in if I've if I've done it in a confusing manner. No, I think that that answers the question, Mari. Maybe you can let us know if we've answered your question correctly. But just to be super clear, you don't need to select a university when you opt to write the MBTs. The MBTs, um, so I'm not sure exactly the, the correct terminology for that, Chris, but I think the MBTs send the results to all universities that you've applied to. So you don't actually yes. select a university on their side. That's the important thing for you to note. Exactly, exactly. When you book your tests at nbt.ac.za, they're not going to require you to, um, you know, to specify. Select. A university at that point you just need to book your test and write the test um, okay. yeah um, okay so perhaps to address the other frequently asked questions um, briefly where can how much does the NBT cost so to write the tests it's 110 rand per test so 110 rand for the well that was that was the pricing in um, 2020 I actually haven't looked at the revised pricing for 2021, but it generally escalates um, by an inflationary margin year on year. So I must just check in, check up on that. Um, it, it, it will be published by this point. The NBTs just released their test dates about a, a, a week, a week or two ago, um, but it's roughly 110 Rand per test. So if you're only writing the AQL test, it's 110 Rand for the test. If you're writing both the AQL and the MAT, it will be two, roughly 220 rand to write the tests. Correct. And just having a look now to confirm on their website, it is 110 rand. Okay. 
So no, no escalation in that regard. Thanks for confirming, Michaela. Um, okay, where, where can I write the MBT tests? Um, so the, there are a number of in-person test venues all over the country um, that the, the National Benchmark Test Project um, administers the tests via. And you can find that out on their website. And obviously, if you want to write the test in person, you can book into that test venue um, at the date that, that makes sense for you to write it. There are a number of opportunities to write the test through the year. Um, and so you, you just need to select when you write the test and then um, and at, at which venue if you're going to write it in person. But the, the National Benchmark Test Project have also um, they also have the capacity to administer the tests online. They, they, they have an online test and they have an opportunity to write the tests online for learners that, that um, would prefer to write it online, especially in the, the, the pandemic context um, with COVID-19. So um, yeah, and their, their online testing, they, they worked on their online testing framework last year um, and they, they have online test proctoring um, technology whereby they can um, validate the the reliability of the online test. So um, yeah, th there's online proctoring software which basically can um, track eye movements, tracks uh, the video and the audio feed, and can essentially flag um, uh, signs of cheating. And in that way, they can uh, they can administer the, the the tests reliably online. So learners can write it in person or online and there's a number of opportunities in the year to do that and you can find out all of that information on mbt.ac.za um, okay and then the last question who typically who typically needs to sit the mat test i think i have done uh, this question some due, due diligence earlier on in the presentation it is your more uh, mathematically inclined degree programs that will require the mat test and it is your um more competitive degree programs, the, the, the degree programs for which there's fierce, fierce competition to get in that will largely require the MAT test because it, it enables universities an additional piece of information ar around which to make the best admissions decisions. Because at the end of the day, a university wants to admit and provide fair access to tertiary education, but also admit learners that have that are best equipped to succeed in those degree programs. So to limit the amount of learners that actually drop out from those degree programs and increase the number of learners that successfully complete those degree programs so that those skills are available into the economy beyond um, university. Um, so, th so that's that's to that point. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, Michaela, are there any other questions coming via Facebook? No, we did get a thank you from Mari, though she appreciates our answer and we did answer her question. Okay, great. That's good to hear. All right. Well, um, I think it's, um, I think um, we can we can round up the webinar then. So um, I don't see any other questions. Um, to all of you that joined this evening, thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Michaela, uh, for your support this evening and for setting everything up. Um, and I hope we I hope we answered your questions and have been helpful in terms of, of navigating um, the national benchmark tests in 2021. Um, as mentioned earlier, if you have any questions, please reach out to our team. Um, you can either engage with us on live chat via our website, advantagelearn.com. Um, you can call us. Our, 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 our number is on, on our website. Or you can email us at info at advantagelearn.com, and we'll make sure we get back to you and assist you with whatever questions that you might have related to the national benchmark tests. Um, so with that, um, we wish you a lovely evening and we, we wish you all of the best um, as you move forward from here.